Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Sony Cybershot DSC HX90V. Priced at $430, US this is Sony's latest addition to the HX family within the Cybershot brand, and in my opinion, a very welcomed one. And that's because last year, the HX60V, the successor to the HX50V that I reviewed two years ago, never made it to the US. So I'm happy to see that Sony has brought this camera back because I do think it has a solid place here in the States as well as around the world. So at 430 US dollars, you're getting an all-in-one camera basically that's a great travel companion. I would say ideal for concerts. In terms of what you're getting, I'll just show you the side of the box right here so you can see uh, at least what the uh, quick rundown of the specifications. Of course, I will go deeper through the course of the unboxing. Uh, it is a 21 megapixel sensor, but the actual effective use of that sensor is 18.2. Still using the Exmor R uh, brand here, and that is because it has been really successful, uh, that sensor, across all of Sony's cameras. Uh, the Bionz X processor also still driving this camera, like much of Sony's flagship uh, DI devices. We have a 30 times optical zoom, that's an effective uh, 25 to all the way out to 750 millimeter, 35 mil equivalent, which is what makes this camera really unique. Another great addition is a built-in OLED electronic viewfinder. Now this is something we did not have on, the, on any previous uh, HX, at least small form factor, camera like this. But thankfully Sony has added it here like they have in their RX100 lineup since uh, the Mark III. Uh, that came out last year, and of course, uh, that OLED has been upgraded in the Mark IV. You won't get nearly as much resolution or quality out of the OLED in this camera, but you have to remember this camera is only $430. It's, uh, you know, essentially half the price of the RX100 Mark IV. You do have a control ring, which you'll see when I get it out of the box, a 180-degree uh, tiltable LCD screen. That's also a nice new addition to the HX uh, again, this line of HX camera, and high-quality video. No 4K video. Uh, hopefully, that's something that Sony will address eventually one day. Uh, still very solid battery life. Uh, Sony saying 360 shots, 390 possibly. It really depends on usage. And here you can just see all of the branding because, yes, we do have Zeiss branding now. The previous generations carried Sony G Glass, so it's nice to see we're getting Zeiss Glass now. Uh, in addition to that, of course, Wi-Fi, NFC, uh, you do have HDMI out. Uh, Sony's multi-port is essentially a USB 2.0 micro port for charging. You'll see that as well. Uh, XAVCS video at 1080p, 60p. That is your highest video quality you're going to capture on this camera. Five-axis image stabilization. So I'm expecting some, imp uh, I would say, impressive video quality, especially considering uh, the newfound stabilization we have in this model. And again, such a long or broad range on that lens. So let me go ahead and get this out of the box. And again, I'm not sure why Sony decided or opted not to uh, bring the HX HX60V to the States, but I am very happy that they brought this one uh, to us and basically to the world. Uh, get the paperwork out of the way. Nothing too interesting there. And let's get right down to business. You can see first and foremost, we have our actual uh, power brick. This is what you're going to connect the USB cable to and plug into the wall. Keep in mind, you do not have to plug this into the wall. You can use something like a power pack, little wrist strap right there. Uh, so that's another good option in the event you're out in the field and you run out of juice with your NPBX1 battery, which Sony's been using for cyber shots now for years. Here's that micro USB cable, the same one you'd use with your phone. It's not a quick charge cable. I'd love to see Sony integrate that, but we're not there yet. The NPBX1 is hiding right here. And that battery, like I said, has been employed now for a really long time. And that's good if you're a Sony user like myself, because then you have a ton of these batteries. Of course, you can also get third-party ones, but definitely recommended to stick with Sony uh, for the most part. Let me get the camera out, because that's the only thing left. Now, this is, I would say, close to pocketable. It is larger, uh, I believe, than the RX100 Mark IV, but not by a ton. We're talking about... Uh, I think it's roughly 8 ounces, something like that. I'm trying to get this over here. And it could actually be smaller. Uh, it's made of all plastic. It is not a metal build like the uh, RX100 series. Uh, the whole point of the RX100 is to be a little bit beefier when it comes to what it feels like in your hand. But I have to say, I'm actually impressed because it looks like Sony has shrunk 
uh, the size of this camera. In fact, it looks almost exactly like the RX100 uh, Mark IV in many ways. Uh, of course, it has a grip here, which the RX100 does not. Uh, a lot of people have been complaining this grip is not enough for their needs, but you have to remember this is a point-and-shoot camera not aimed at pros or people who are looking for professional-type quality. So uh, I really already can say out of the box, I really like this form factor a lot. Um, the HX50V was a much bigger camera. Uh, as was the HX60V that I mentioned never made it to the States. So this is a very refreshing profile, considering this camera is capable of so much in now what truly is a much more pocket-friendly form. You can see that tiltable 180-degree display that I mentioned before, a new addition uh, to the HX uh, lineup in this form at least. And basically, uh, if we just take a quick tour around the body, we have our mode dial, uh, right here, which gives you all the shooting modes that traditionally you'd expect to see from Sony. Your shutter button, your zoom rocker, on off, uh, your switch for the flash, which surprisingly seems a little bit smoother uh, than the one on the RX100 Mark IV. Your OLED viewfinder switch right here on the left side of the body. You simply pull that down and it pops out. And then you can pull out the actual EVF. And this is something that a lot of users say, oh, I don't like it, I don't care for it, I don't need it. Guess what? Anyone who needs reading glasses does need it, and they are essentially shooting blind without it. Uh, so whether you're left or right eye dominant really isn't relevant. What it comes down to is, do you need it? And a lot of consumers do, and I think it's really uh, intelligent of Sony to have started adding it because they recognize that they really need to accommodate everyone, especially on a camera like this, where they're trying to get a broad range of consumer. Uh, Wi-Fi, GPS, onboard, that's why it has a V in the name. Uh, that V does designate that this does have GPS, so you will have geotagging on your photos if that's something you desire. Uh, the NFC contact point right there. Uh, the control ring can be set to uh, control the zoom or focus. But this is less about manual controls and more about living in the auto world and really just taking advantage of a great all-in-one travel companion. And this is a camera that I told myself many times I don't need, I don't want, but the reality is is that there are so many situations where this is a great substitute uh, for the RX100 line simply because of the range of the zoom. And the fact that they've been able to fit it into such a small body is an engineering feat in itself. Uh, I really didn't expect it to be this small. Here is the multi-port right here on the right-hand side of the body. No weatherproofing here. Uh, that's really just a micro USB port, as I mentioned before, but you can use it for other accessories, uh, so that's why it's referred to as a multi-port. Uh, no audio jacks or anything like that. Uh, we do have another micro, uh, excuse me, HDMI port has been relocated. I was going to say another micro USB uh, on the bottom for video out. You can also get 4K out in order to review your stills. After all, you do have uh, more than 4K uh, resolution when it comes to your still images, your battery bay right there, as well as SD card slot. Uh, this does, or rather the camera is capable of up to 10 frames per second, uh, continuous shooting, so uh, definitely speedy, but not, again, up to the standards that the RX100, uh, the latest gen, the Mark IV, has, but you really shouldn't be comparing this uh, to the Mark IV, even though it looks a lot like it. In fact, I'm going to bring out the Mark IV so you can just see what they look like side by side. And you can see that Sony, uh, as they've been doing now for years, really has been borrowing or lending uh, design and features in general from cameras that do exceedingly well for them. And this is a good idea, in my opinion. Most manufacturers should follow this lead because it makes sense. I mean, you're looking at taking things that work and applying them to other products. No consumer is going to be upset with that, especially not one that's entering a much lower price point. Again, plastic body, but you can see this is slightly smaller. Yes, it does have a substantially smaller sensor, not the one inch you'll find here in the RX, nor does it have 4K video, uh, nor does it have that uh, high-speed um, 960 frames per second capability with the stacked DRAM on the sensor, but still a very competent camera for basically everyone who lives in the real world that isn't looking for professional uh, results or an overall professional control as well because that's not who this camera is geared for. Uh, as I mentioned, the video is AVC HD, but it is limited to 1080p. I wish 4K was on board here, even if it was $100 more. I think Sony would do themselves a favor. I don't think it would cannibalize the RX100 line in any way. It would only enhance 
uh, basically the offering that I'm sharing with all of you today. But again, this is a camera designed for the general public, for everyone, and that's why Sony, I think, has decided to stick with uh, the 1080p standard that still is a standard even though of course anyone who follows my channel knows how firmly I believe in 4k video and future proofing your content also the ability to be able to pull uh, stills out of that content you can see right here pretty uh, straightforward layout the buttons haven't changed much from what you have on the RX line and that's where this is really a big departure again this does lend so much from that design in uh, regard to how Sony has reshaped uh, really started over with the uh, HX, what was the HX 50V, 60V here in the form of the 90V. So we have a video capture button, menu function, our uh, menu jog dial and select button, as well as some multiple uh, features that have always been there, flash, uh, your drive mode, timer, um, and Sony's own walkthrough feature, the question mark, that'll basically teach you how to use the camera, which I think is great for novices, people that aren't familiar with Sony alike. A great thing to have. It'll literally tell you exactly what every feature uh, is about and how to apply it to your own personal needs. And then playback. Uh, at the bottom, we also have uh, the speaker output for when you're playing back video so you can actually hear what you've recorded. And again, it's just a really nice camera. I'm interested to see what still and video capability is like. In terms of features, I mentioned before that this does have five axis stabilization, which is a really big deal. You can see right here, uh, 921,000 dots on the LCD. The viewfinder, uh, I think, is 630-something, so it's nowhere near the brand-new upgraded OLED viewfinder that you'll find in the RX100 or even the RX, uh, I meant Mark IV or Mark III. Uh, the Mark III has less uh, res as well as uh, uh, overall field of view, but still, this is an incredible package to bring together uh, for a consumer in something that is truly pocketable. After all, you saw it is smaller than the RX100 Mark IV uh, at 7.7 .7 ounces, roughly 8 ounces with the battery, everything included. So I really like what Sony's done here. I think the price is right. I think the capabilities are just about best in class. You will not find another travel companion like this. So if you own something like the RX10, you know, something fairly larger, this is a great companion to something like that. I don't think that you need to own something like this if you have the RX100 in any of its generations, but I could understand wanting it because if you were to travel with, let's say, two cameras like this, you've got your, in many cases, digital SLR replacement for a lot of consumers, not everyone, of course. Uh, let's not get crazy with the RX100 line. And then also, of course, 4K video with the Mark IV. And then you have this that gives you that reach on the lens that you simply cannot accomplish uh, with any of the RX100 uh, cameras, since they're all roughly 20 to 70 millimeters, 24 to 70 millimeters, here 25 to 750. Then if you employ clear image zoom, it just takes it out to over a thousand. So this is really a mega zoom in the form of a traditional compact camera, which is why I've always been a big fan, and I likely will end up, uh, you know, keeping this, uh, even though I hadn't planned to originally, simply because it does represent in many ways, a game changer, or really the only option when it comes to a mega zoom in a compact form factor. Uh, final things, all of you should know beyond what I've already stated. Uh, I don't believe there's any RAW here, which I know some people will complain about. I personally do not see that as an issue. That's not who Sony is going after with a product like this, uh, because again, it's not designed for pros. But between that 30 times Zeiss lens, the 18.2 megapixel still captures, the built-in OLED uh, viewfinder, a high quality, XAVCS video granted still, you know, refined or confined, I mean, to 1080p, 1080p at 60p, uh, but that five axis image stabilization should make it seem like this thing is sitting on a mount. Uh, in other words, that's how stable video should be. Of course, I will be posting uh, samples of uh, the newfound range of the LCD display uh, and really just overall enhancements across the board that I haven't even covered here uh, are all things that really make this camera a winner. Granted, I haven't tested it yet, so until I do, you know, don't jump and run out and pick one of these up unless you absolutely must have it. After all, we are in summer. But good to see the HX90V here. I missed the HX60V not coming to the States, but it looks like uh, waiting ended up paying off. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.